go over the property. So the main thing here is that when you're multiplying, okay, so let's say you have log of A times B, what you can do is you can expand this out to log of A plus log of B. Now the key thing is when you do these expanding and condensing uh, rules is that whatever the base is, like say if this was base 7, then both of these logarithms are going to also have the same base 7. Okay, now the next property is, let's say for example you are dividing. So say you had log of A divided by B, you can expand this to log of A minus log of B. Again, keeping in mind that whatever that base is, it's going to be the same on both sides of this uh, equation. And then the last property that we want to discuss is that if you have log of, let's say, a to the nth power, okay, what you can do with this exponent, this is called the power property of logs, is you can bring it down in front of the log so that you're multiplying by that power. So it would be n times log of a. Now, all these properties, they're reversible. So what that means is that, you know, if they gave you the right side of this equation over here, you can say, well, I'm adding these two logs together. They have the same base. So I can combine them or condense them into one log by multiplying the arguments. So A and B are called the arguments. You multiply those together and condense it into one log. Or if I'm subtracting, then I can divide. And if I have a coefficient like this here in front of the log, I can bring it back up as a power. And that's called condensing when you go from the right side to the left side. If you go from the left to the right, that's called expanding. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, go through some examples here together and see if you can do them on your own and we can uh, double check uh, with me as we go. So the first thing here, number one, let's look at this one. We've got log of 3x to the second power. Well, we can do this a couple different ways. Okay, one way to do this is we can use that power property to bring that exponent down in front of the log. So what this would look like is it's going to be 2 log 3x. Okay. Now notice when they don't write the base, see how there's not a base written right here? What that means is it's understood to be like a common logarithm or log base 10. Okay, so if you don't write it, it's understood to be base 10. But now notice that the 3 and the x, they're multiplied together, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this out. We're going to write this as 2, and I'm going to write this as log of 3 plus log of x. Okay, now the reason I'm adding here is because the 3 and the x are multiplied. That's this top property here. So when you multiply, you add. Okay, and then the last step is I'm going to distribute this 2 into the parentheses, okay, like so. And that's going to give us 2 log of 3 plus 2 log of x. And that's fully expanded right there, and you got it. So again, what you want to pay attention to are these three properties right here, and just realize that they're going to be reversible, so you can expand or you can condense. Let's go over to one of these condensing ones. Let's uh, look at number 11. So see how these are all added together here? Okay, so when we add, what we can do is we can take these arguments, the 3, the x, and the y, and we can multiply those together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as a natural log of 3 times x times y, or you can just write them next to each other, 3xy. Now remember the ln, that's really like log base e, okay, but they don't write the base e there. It's understood to be base e, um, so you can just write the ln, so it's like a shorthand. Okay, let's see if we can cruise down to some other ones. Let's maybe go down to number 12. Okay, so notice this one we're subtracting, right? So what do we do when we subtract? Well, that's this middle one here. We are going to divide. So we're going to say this is log of 5 divided by x. Now what you don't want to do, okay, is you don't want to make this mistake. A lot of students do this uh, just inadvertently. They'll say log of 5 divided by log of x. No, you don't want to actually divide the logs. You're just dividing the arguments, just the 5 and the x. So this is not right. We want to cross that out, okay? So let's look at some more um, challenging ones. Let's maybe cruise down to, say, for example, like number 6. Okay, so now this is the expanding column here, so we're going to practice expanding. Let me bring this up a little bit. So this is log base 3, okay? But notice we have in the numerator 7 times x. See how the 7 and the x are right next to each other? So this is really going to be log base 3, right, of 7 plus log base 3 of x. And then see how you're... Uh, Dividing by y squared, when we divide, we subtract. So this is going to be minus log base 3 
of y to the second power. Now what do we do with this 2, this power? Well, what we want to do when it's a power, you want to bring that down in front of the log right there. So this would end up being minus 2 times log base 3 of y. And then you're going to have the rest of these terms as well. Log base 3 of 7 plus log base 3 of x minus 2 log base 3 of y, and that's fully expanded. So let's look at another example. Maybe let's cruise down to, let's say, number 19. So number 19, this one is a, a condensing one, okay? And so what I, first thing I do when I'm condensing is I take that coefficient, see that one-fourth, and I bring it up as a power. So that's the power property. Now when you do that, that's going to make this x to the one-fourth power. But remember, the one-fourth power is really what? Well, it's really, let's expand this a little bit so you can make it a little bit bigger here. Okay, so this is actually going to be the same thing as... Okay, let's move this up so we can see a little bit better here. So this is going to be the same thing as log base 3, okay, of the fourth root of x. Okay, remember that when the denominator, that's the root, and the numerator, that's the power. So when you see this um, one-fourth, that's really like the fourth root. If it's one-third, that'd be the cube root. Okay, so um, let's go down to the next part here. So now we're subtracting by log base 3 of y. Now remember when you subtract you divide. So this y is actually going to go in the denominator here. And we're also subtracting by log base 3 of z. So remember, again, when we subtract, you're going to be dividing. This is also going to go in the denominator. So that's our final result right there, okay? Log base 3 of the fourth root of x over y times z. Now, another way to look at this, just to kind of explain this to you, so you see this minus 1? Okay, this is understood to be like a negative 1. Same thing here, minus, this is like a negative 1. You could think of this as bringing this negative 1, okay, up as a power, using the power property. Same thing here, you could take this negative 1, bring it up as a power, z to the negative 1. Well, when you have a negative exponent, what does that tell you to do? Well, it tells us to take the reciprocal. So this is going to be like 1 over y, right? And then this over here is going to be log base 3 of, whoops, erase that, log base 3 of 1 over z, right? And then instead of subtracting now, these are added. Because remember, subtraction is really like adding the opposite, okay? And so that's really going to be an addition. And we brought up the negative 1, okay, as an exponent. We took the reciprocal because that's what the negative 1 exponent tells us. And then the 1 fourth again is just log base 3 of the fourth root of x, Okay, so you're with me so far. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is just to show you that, see how when you raise that to a negative exponent, that variable goes in the denominator? But remember, we talked about earlier, when you add, what do you do to the arguments? Well, you multiply them together, right? So adding is multiplying. So this is going to be log base 3 of the fourth root of x times 1 over y times 1 over, whoops, 1 over, whoops, 1 over z, okay? And so that's our final result. But notice the y and the z, these guys are ending up in the denominator anyways, right? So this is kind of a long roundabout way, but just to kind of show you why it works. But just remember, anything that you're subtracting, any log that you're subtracting, those arguments go in the bottom. Anything that you're adding, those arguments are going to go in the numerator. Okay, so you're with me so far? So let me erase a little bit of this, and let's try another example here. Let's try a little bit more challenging one. How about like number uh, nine? Let's look at that one. So you, over here you can see we've got log of uh, 5 over y cubed, z to the first, all raised to the fourth power. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to do this problem. I'm going to do this in a slightly different fashion this time. Okay, you see the 4? I'm going to distribute the 4 into the parentheses. So it's going to distribute to the z, it's going to distribute to the y, it's going to distribute to the 5. So what we have now is kind of an intermediate step is we have log of 5 to the fourth, okay, which is... 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, uh, 4 times, that's 625. And when you have a power to a power, what you do is you actually multiply the exponents. So that's going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. And then z, this is like z to the first, 1 times 4 is 4. Okay, that's z to the fourth. Okay, now what we can do is we can expand this. So we can see that, okay, we've got log of 625 minus log of y to the twelfth minus log of z to the fourth, right? So anything that's in the denominator, whenever you divide, you subtract. So that's why I'm writing it as uh, a difference here. But then what do we do with these 
powers, these exponents. We bring them down in front of the log, right, like that. So let me switch back to this different pen here. I'll maybe even change the color here a little bit. Let's maybe do a green this time. So our final result is going to be log of 625, okay, minus 12 log of y minus 4 log of 